Welcome back to the Sports Authority. Richard Skinner, our Bengals beat writer and digital sports columnist, joins me now. Uh, Skinny, I have here the Media Guide, which for those of you at home who don't know, the Media Guide is the source of all knowledge on the Bengals. Go ahead and place your uh, left hand on the Media Guide. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Yep. I, Richard Skinner. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're, you're, okay. Uh, I, Richard Skinner. Will not overreact to one preseason game with the Bengals. Will not overreact to one preseason game with the Bengals. Trust me. I'm not trying to react over half of a regular season with the Bengals. So that's a good one, Chris. I okay. Like we it. just wanted like to get that out that of the way. That was well done. Now that, now that we're out of the way, we can put that away. Uh, Let's talk about that game. It is pretty exciting. The Bengals beat the defending Super Bowl champs in a preseason game, but it was a pretty good showing by this young team. Yeah, and I, don't, I never think wins and losses in that matter. Performance matters. Um... You know, the turnovers aside, I thought the offense did a pretty decent job moving the ball. Um, the first team defense, you know, they did give up the third down conversion to Gio Bernard, which was kind of ironic. And then Joseph Osai got a sack. And, you know, listen, I know it was one series for Tampa, and I get that. It was one series for the first team defense. They got off the field on a second, third down, thanks to Joseph Osai. And from that point forward, boy, the defensive line just dominated that game for the Bengals. You know, if not for the pick six that Kyle Shermer threw, it, it, it ends 19 to 19 to six. I mean, uh, maybe even 16 to six. So uh, I thought that part was impressive. And yes, there was enough on offense, and there's enough still dangling out there. But listen, if you're starting Brandon Allen for a lot of games, you're not winning a lot. He's shown that he can get you a quarter, a half, maybe a game or two. Um, and I thought he's actually, I think he's better now than he was last year because he's got some experience under his belt. But trust me, if you're playing Kyle Shermer in a game, and this is no knock, I mean, he is what he is. He's an undrafted free agent who just is in over his head. You're, you're not winning games. So other than that, no, I thought, it was, I thought it was a good performance. All right, the stat of the day that I thought was really interesting is Joseph Asai was born April 12, 2000. That's funny. Tom Brady, who he sacked for his first career sack, was drafted April 16, 2000, four days later. But really, Osai was the one that stood up with that sack. Three total tackles. As there you see the grades of the defense against the Buccaneers, courtesy of Pro Football Focus. Asai played really well. And then there's this guy, Darius Hodge, nobody has ever heard of. Ridiculous. Uh, one and a half sacks, five quarterback hits, a tackle for a loss. The young guys really stepped up on defense. Yeah, and Amani Bledsoe, I'm glad he got on that grade as well because he actually had a really good game with three quarterback hits as well. Um, yeah, Darius Hodge, it's funny. When, when the threes get in there in camp, they get a couple of reps here and there. And I even turned to a couple guys as we're watching practice, and I said, you know, he's not going to make this team, but, boy, he's pretty impressive coming off the edge, right? And to see him then transfer this to the game, and yes, I know it was against the backups, but he dominated. And now you go, all right, Khalid Kareem, he's had a good camp too, but now he's hurt. You better stay healthy or this guy's got a chance to leapfrog you. Um, I have seen, I will say, Chris, I've seen guys do this in camps against backups where they're just, for whatever reason, those backups aren't even close to as good as a Darius Hodge, but then if you match him against really physical, athletic tackles, it's just they're in over their head. I would love to see him get some reps against some better guys to see, was this legit or was this just him against backups? Because, I mean, I'll give him credit. Hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a club from an undrafted free agent, you better make a splash. I'm not sure I've seen a defensive player in a long time make a splash like this kid, this kid did. I know it's only one game and we already swore we're not gonna overreact, right. but after that one performance, what are the chances you think that he sticks around if he continues to at least show good enough. Yeah, I, I think you almost have to. Now, there are, I, I mean, I even wrote this today. He was one of my guys that I wrote about uh, in, in takeaways. I mean, you've got literally five ends in front of him. Kareem, Osai, uh, Sam Hubbard, Cam Sample, who can play a little tackle, and, and Trey Hendrickson. And chances are you're keeping five tackles, five ends, so he becomes the sixth end. But when you start to look at a guy performing, you go, well, I don't care who he is, what he is, how we have to make this work. We have to find a way to make this work. The thing for him is, to his credit, he's put on tape. If the Bengals cut him, somebody may say, well, let's take a flyer on him. You know, the hope was maybe a guy like that, you're like, oh, he's really good. Let's hide him and let's find a way to get him back to the practice squad. After last night, I don't care what he does in the next two preseason games. He's probably going to at least wind up on somebody's roster the way he played and showed. Again, I'm, I, 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 we just swore, I swore, I swore on the, the, the stack of media guy there um, that I wouldn't do it, but I, I was blown away by his performance. He opened eyes, and I guarantee you the coaching staff's going, hey, we've got a nice problem right now. And maybe Kareem's injury lingers. I don't know that, but maybe it does, and you have to do something roster-wise there to go, let's keep him, let's get Kareem on some kind of level of, of I, whatever it is, and, and go from there. But, boy, he was good. The, the star, other than him uh, defensively, I thought was Joseph yeah. Asai, a guy that yeah. I mean, we were all pretty high on once they drafted him. You know, he had the tape. 
Uh, the fact that he was getting first team reps there, he made an impact against a pretty good offensive line. I think he beat Tristan Wirfs yep. for that sack yep. against Tom Brady. Uh, Flash of the pan, just kind of one of those, or, or is this something that no. you think that we're going to be able to yeah, see? Yeah, they drafted him, you know, in the, in the in the third round, and honestly, he probably it's funny you flip flop him and Carmen. You probably wouldn't argue with it. Him in second round, Carmen in the third round. Uh, they drafted him with the hope of this was this was a an edge rush guy that they can also use the versatility to drop into coverage because they want to do with this with ends. You know, that they're they're tinkering with kind of a NASCAR defensive line on third down with. Him on an edge, Trey Hendrickson on an edge, Sham Hubbard inside, and maybe Cam Sample down inside. Uh, that's a pretty good pass rush group. And, uh, yeah, he was he was really, really good, left with a wrist injury. Hopefully it's not too bad. We won't know probably until tomorrow when we get back to practice because today was a day off. But, yeah, as much as, as Hodge was great, um, based on the level of who he played against, Osai was better. Uh, the Bengals' pass rush was so bad last season. It, it struggled the last couple seasons. That's obviously something they put an emphasis on in the draft and signings. Has it gotten significantly? I know the stats will say this is also against second and third team offensive lines. We don't know. But do you feel more confident after this game that they're going to be able to put pressure on quarterbacks? I do. And, and it's... You know, they also don't forget they sacked Tom Brady, the first team, in in the sixth play of that. And you didn't see a lot of the blitz, blitz package. We've seen a lot of that in camp. And, and some of it, again, is they're going to drop Trey Hendrickson into coverage on occasion. They're going to drop Sam Hubbard. They're going to drop Joseph Osai. You're going to see Mike Hilton blitz off the slot. He did it the other day in camp and got a sack, and that's relative in camp because nobody gets hit. Saw Logan Wilson on Thursday come up the middle on, on Joe Burr to the point where I think Joe was – so he, Joe ran out right trying to get away and just trying to throw it away. So they've got some blitz package stuff they can use as well. So, yeah, I – I'd be. They're not getting 17 sacks this year. They might get 17 sacks in the first five or six. They're not getting 17 sacks, which is the worst in the NFL. It's almost impossible to be that bad. Um, yes, they've upgraded significantly, and it showed. All right, the other side, on the other side of the trenches is what everyone else was watching. Uh, the offensive line, as we take a look at the pro football focus grades and the blocking scheme, and there's an interesting one at number two there, really number one and two. Deontay Smith graded out an 84.8 on 16 snaps. Michael Jordan. You're happy to see this out of him. Grades yep. out an 80 flat on eight snaps. Uh, oh, your overall thoughts on the offensive line and how they, they were blocked. Yeah, and I think Mike actually played 13 snaps. I saw the same thing you did, but I also think he played 13 snaps. Neither here nor there. It's still a pretty good grade, and that might have been actually pass blocking grade for all I know. But, yeah, um, look, Deontay Smith has been kind of the real deal since moving to guard. He has struggled at tackle. He struggled at tackle in camp. He's been really good at guard. And, they like Mike Jordan. Um, you know, I know everybody can, can you know, blanch at that and, and, and balk at that, and, and I get it. And it's not just this offensive line coach. It was the last offensive line coach believe in Mike. They gave Mike chances. Mike kept the job for a bit, lost the job. Then kept the job for a bit, lost the job. Now he's getting the job again. And there was a couple of moments in camp this week where he wasn't very good. Larry Ogunjobi embarrassed him one day to the point where I thought Larry was going to literally kill Joe Burrow if he didn't pull up. I mean, he came so fast, I think he scared himself that he was that close to Joe. Um, but, yeah, I thought Mike held his own last night. Um, Deontay Smith, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Again, blocking grades are really hard if you don't get coaches' grades or PFF grades. And other than, honestly, the first play that Jackson Carmen was in the hold, and that's the one we're kind of interested in, Let's not forget the touchdown drive. He was the right guard. The touchdown play, they ran behind him as the right guard with Chris Evans and, and uh, you know, thought he did some good things. It wasn't a ton of good things, but he did enough good things to go, all right, you're still in the mix. But I, I think after last night, I think it's pretty solid. The two tackles obviously are where they are. They pulled Quentin Spain early, so I think he's got the left guard spot. Trey Hopkins didn't play. That's just slowing him back in, so he's going to be the center. So it's obviously the right guard. Sounds like it's the last battle to have. Michael Jordan took a good step in the right direction, but now you feel good that if maybe it doesn't work, Jackson keeps playing well, and Deontay Smith is in that mix. Um, okay, you got a lot of guys to choose from, which is good. Now, we were going to go give you the grades for the offense, but uh, the guy who graded out most was Trenton Irwin. He and, did a uh, nice a lot of, He did a nice job. Nothing against Trenton. Three catches uh, for 30-something or whatever, yeah. I'm just saying the I'm majority no, of the weapons out him. there no, uh, were, no, were I, not. I, I, not to cut you off. I will say there is a battle for that last wide receiver spot, him, Trent Taylor, and, uh, and, and Stanley Morgan. Uh, and the fact that Trenton returned to punt last night was interesting because he hasn't done it a lot in camp. Trent Taylor has. Um, I'm now leaning towards where I thought it was Stanley Morgan before camp, thought it was Trent Taylor going through camp after this week. Now I thought it is, think it is Trent Irwin. That can obviously change, but I think he's moved to that sixth spot at the moment. So there well, we go. The other offensive position I want to talk about yeah. is the running back position because that's one, you know, the number one and the number two right. are pretty much solidified. Samaj P. Ryan and Joe Mixon. Uh, we saw a healthy dose of Chris Evans. Obviously, you saw on the pass block rates, he was up there. 
Uh, he had the rushing touchdown. He looked pretty impressive for a rookie making his day. Yeah, the numbers don't look great, right? 12 rushes, 25 yards. But remember the first run, he made he had a great spin move because he was about to get tackled for a loss. He had that hard run for the touchdown you mentioned. He had a team high four catches for 33 yards. And then until I, you know, I, I saw the pass blocking grade, you didn't realize where he was in that. And that's the thing that you kind of worry about with running backs is, you know, can you run it? Yeah. Can you catch it? Yeah. Can you pass block? Sometimes no. And that's a good sign for him. I thought he did great things. And I'll be honest, Jacquez Patrick, um, he was really good last uh, training camp, looked really good in the one scrimmage that they had, but he had no preseason. So they stashed him on the practice squad. And here he is now. I, I, this is going to be way over the edge because I like Samaj P. Ryan, and I'm, you know, I, I'm glad they brought him back, and he brings a lot of things. I'm not so sure that guy isn't close to being your closer, maybe. He's got some physicality. 6'2", 6'3", 230, 235, runs through tackles, and yes, I get it was the backups. But I think he took a step forward to making the team as well. I kind of had him on as the odd guy out. There's five backs for probably four spots. Travion Williams, again, is hurt. And this is three straight years. He keeps dealing with injuries, and I hate to do it. But um, they've got Travion Williams and Chris Evans. So Chris Evans, then you go, all right, well, there's your Travion Williams. Let's get us another bigger back in Jacquez Patrick. Still a couple games to go, but Travion Williams, if, if he doesn't get healthy, I think he's in a tough spot. Let's look forward. Their next game is a significant one, not just because we're going to probably see more of the starters and the guys in the first string, but they're going to Washington. They're playing the team that ended Joe Burrow's season. We think this is the game we're going to see Joe Burrow out there. Is this a significant moment for his rehab? And if you're, if you're Zach Taylor, do you almost need to put him out there just to get that monkey off his back? Well, it's funny you say that. I said that to somebody on the, on the Bengals uh, uh, staff uh, uh, last week. I said, how about go exercise the demons? And he's just, they just looked at me and went, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think I'm with you. I think I go exercise the demon. I, I need to get him some snaps. We talked about that last week. We knew it wasn't going to be this week. They already had ruled him out for, the, uh, for the, the game on Saturday. I get it that you don't want to have that horror. And honestly, I don't, you probably didn't get a chance to see it, Chris, but I watched a little bit of the, the, uh, the, 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 the Washington football team's game that, that on Thursday night. And Chase Young came off the edge and just about blew up Cam Newton. And you're like, mm. and look, hopefully Jonah Williams blocks better than whoever the left tackle for New England was. But you're like, uh, do I really want that to potentially happen to our guy? Um, I think I'm going to wait a week if I'm going to do it. But I'm kind of with you in a way, though. It's like, hey, let's run this thing back. Let's let's Michael's the right guard and Joe's the quarterback. And let's take maybe even one snap, just a ceremonial one snap to go. All right, demons exercise. Let's move on to the next step. I, I don't think it's going to happen. One snap, pitch the ball, yes. don't get him hit. You got it in, you're exactly. done. You're, you're don't even right. hand it off. Right. Don't, don't even just take it, throw it to somebody <laughs> behind you and get, get out of the way and run to the sideline and be Spike done. it for all we right. care. Just Correct. get the demon exactly. off the bat. Exactly. Uh, looking forward to that game, what do you need to see out of the Bengals as they go forward and who's the guy we should watch for? Yeah, I, I think it's a lot more of the offensive line, that right guard spot. Um, you know, let, let's see them take another step and maybe with the first team finish drives off. And that's the goofy part is I don't know if they'd have finished that first drive. They might have kicked the field goal. They might have gone backwards with penalties and punted it, but um, you know the turnover kind of derailed it. Let's see them finish a drive off with the first team group, um, maybe a couple drives with the first team group. Love to see the second or the first team defense get a couple more reps of, hey, you did a great job in Tampa on one series. Let's see if you're a couple three series. The, the one thing I will say is we still, and Zach Taylor still has not addressed this, is this going to be like preseason game number three that we used to see? Or is this preseason game number two like we used to see? So I, it'll be, I think it's a question that he's going to answer on Wednesday when we get a chance to talk to him, maybe if we get a chance off the side tomorrow. Um, I, I just want to see more of the main guys because let's face it, the last preseason game, if you choose to take, take it like the old fourth preseason game, then you know we're going to see guys that are going to get cut anyway. So what's the point of that? Um, so yeah, I, I think there's a lot to see on, on Friday.